in the aircraft is as the uh, weapons instructor and there is a safety number to ensure that they conduct a safe practice and to instruct them on the use of the, the weapon um, and to make sure that they do the practice correctly. Um, we'll be operating in the Bristol Channel and we'll be do conducting uh, initial dry runs with the aircraft just making sure that we've got the procedures correct before we, before we start uh, releasing any of the rounds and then we'll go into a, a hot run uh, which is a live firing after we've conducted a range clearance of the area uh, and then uh, hopefully a nice safe practice uh, with the crew doing the correct drills. The heavy machine gun is just one sortie that they have to do every six months. Uh, other sorties include occasional uh, live weapon drops, get to drop depth charges uh, as another live practice. Um, very occasionally we get to fire sea skew missiles, which we did last year, and occasionally torpedo as well. So, but mainly it's the, uh, the machine gun that requires the most practice because it's a perishable skill. It's been probably a year since the crew have operated the weapon. Uh, they were both using it out in uh, the Gulf last year during the war. Initially a little bit rusty, uh, the first few shots were a little bit wayward, but uh, again after quite a, a good correction we saw some quite accurate shooting towards the end. And I think um, if we'd been going against a real target we would have probably sunk it. A very successful exercise, but Mark has reported a recurring technical problem with the aircraft. A problem for the maintainers to resolve. Uh, the pressure's on a little bit now because we're looking to embark the aircraft on the Southampton within the next four days, so we've really got to put a push now to uh, try and clear the fault. Uh, we worked late last night and changed another component, uh, and we were hoping to check just fly the aircraft again this morning to see if that effort has uh, been successful. Unfortunately, the weather's beaten us today, and we've had to re return the aircraft to the hangar, and we'll have to look to check test flight again uh, tomorrow. After the break, HMS Southampton is hunting submarines off the coast of Scotland. With the aircraft's technical problems resolved, Mark and Amy have now joined their ship. Southampton is moving through the Clyde towards an exercise area where it will practice anti-submarine warfare, but the one it encounters on the surface is not joining in the war games. Like I said, the submarine out on the starboard bow now is one of our SSBNs, it's our, one of our uh, nuclear deterrent carrying submarines with the Trident missile system on board, and they're on the trials and workup and uh, proceeding back out towards the Clyde now. This is not the submarine we'll be working with uh, later on today. Um, back out on his patrol again, actually. With safety in mind and time to spare, Southampton drops anchor and the crew go through some crucial training procedures. If anybody falls over the side of the ship, uh, that's, that's just to see how quick our, the ship's reactions are to getting that person that's fell into the water back onto the ship. So Everybody who's free or spare, run up here. Obviously I'll run in there, get the, get the suit on, get into the water as quick as we can. Uh, the swim line which you saw attached to me, basically if, if the current's too strong or anything like that, they can pull me back in on that. or. Basically, when, when I pick up the casualty, they'll pull me back in if I'm out of energy or whatever. In this case, once the victim is rescued, he's hung out to dry. The submarine is now in the area, and it's time to find it. Well, the Lynx is our only anti-submarine weapon we have on board. It can carry the uh, Stingray torpedo, and we will take it out. Uh, initially put it out on a surface search using its radar to try and find the periscope of the submarine if it's on the surface, or at periscope depth. Because the submarine to fire against us has got to get a fire control solution, and we do that with this periscope. And the Lynx's radar is very good at spotting these periscopes. And once we get it, uh, if he gets it on the radar, or we get it on sonar, what we could do then is vector him in to simulate an attack. 
and he'd go in and on top of the submarine and uh, simulate attack by dropping a marine sound signal. It's just an explosive charge that uh, the submariners hear quite well as it resonates against their pressure hull uh, and that'll initiate an attack. And then the aim of it is then to keep pressure on the submarine by uh, keep uh, putting more weapons, simulated weapons, into the water and uh, to keep the pressure on the submarine so he's got to try and evade us. As the maintainers finish preparing the links for flight, its deadly cargo is brought up from the ship's magazine. Here we have a Stingray torpedo, which is what we're going to be flying with today for our anti-submarine warfare training. It's a lightweight acoustic homing torpedo. The nose section has the transmitters, receivers and transducers in. The warhead is the second section. And that's about 45 kilograms, about 30 kilograms of which is high explosive. Behind that it has its guidance system, which contains uh, an autopilot. Behind that we have the power supply, the Stingray torpedo. That's through the salt water battery. Once the, air, once, uh, the weapon is dropped from the aircraft, the battery cover is removed. Then when it hits the water, it will be powered up by the salt water. And then the control system behind it. Once the weapon drops, um, hits the water, gets powered up, it then has several different types of sonars which it uses to find the target all by itself. And then once it's found the target and homes in on it, it then um, detonates on impact with the target itself. So it's very much a drop and leave alone weapon once in the water. The hunt for the sub begins, and it's the captain who will give the order to attack. HMS Southampton is a Type 42 destroyer, displacement 4,500 tons, ship's company of about 280 personnel, 40 of which are women. In times of conflict, we'll be placed uh, up threat, directly in harm's way, and our aim principally is to act against enemy aircraft or enemy missiles for the ta task group and high value units. One of the lessons learned way back in 1982 in the Falklands was that once a missile penetrates your outer layer of defences, there's very little you can do to actually uh, protect yourself against it. So we procured this rather marvellous gadget called a phalanx, which looks a little bit uh, like an R2-D2 from Star Wars days. Uh, and that basically sprays a ray, uh, whole wall of bullets out uh, in order to shred any missiles at very close range, real white to the eye stuff, um, and the idea being to detonate the missile before it uh, achieves impact. We have a Sea Dart missile system which uh, operates to a range of about 70 nautical miles. We'll be working with uh, other fighter aircraft and indeed a wider force area protection uh, picture provided by uh, airborne early warning aircraft. We also have a four and a half inch gun um, on the forecastle uh, just ahead of the Sea Dart missile system. That's designed as an anti surface and a uh, land support role providing naval gunfire support for troops ashore um, and also uh, it's very, very well equipped, very capable of taking out any surface threats that might come and attack us. What we're doing now is trying to find the submarine. There are two submarines in the area, one of the Dutch uh, S uh, diesel submarines, are also one of our nuclear submarines. We're here to cause them problems, difficulties. We try, they've got certain things that they need to achieve and we're trying to get in the way. Um, we're trying to find them, detect them, let them know that they've been found um, and it's a very challenging environment for them. The ship is now 